Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here and let's play some Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup with this 2022 Guide for Complete Beginners picking up with our Minotaur of Trog here on the third level of the dungeon. We've got to cover a lot of the good stuff about how to start out in this game and what I'm doing now with the series is just kind of getting a little deeper with the Minotaur so you can see what happens when we have to start making more choices between different abilities that we learn, new equipment that we get, harder enemies, uh, and even some choices about where we go in the dungeon itself. So let's get right back to it. All right, so I always like to look in on myself whenever I'm picking up any game of dungeon crawl that I'm playing. It's a great way to not just rush into the game and die as I can do a lot. So this is character is fifth level. We're 30% of the way to sixth level. We have four armor class, which we need to improve very quickly. 12 evasion, which is nice. 23 strength, which is quite strong, which minotaurs are going to be. 45 hit points, nice and thick. And we luckily, looking in the upper left, you can see we have two potions of heal wounds, a invisibility and a lignification, which, okay, fine. We're going to push shift five and look at our screen to see we have a hand axe, which we want to upgrade immediately, leather armor and gloves. So we really have very few items, but the real thing is that we're strong, we're trog, we're a minotaur, we're doing just fine. And with trog, if I push A to show my abilities, we do have Trog's Hand available with two pips of piety, but because it costs piety, and Trog's Hand does cost more piety than Berserk, we'll probably dip under two pips if we use it, but it's still a great thing to have if we need it in a pinch. So I'm ready to go now, and I see that there is a staircase up right here on the minimap, and then there's one over here, so we can see this one and this one. I'm going to push O, and let's just auto-explore. Yep, we took out a bunch of gnolls, did we not? I have 16 stones that are uh, in my quiver, and I can throw them, but I'm actually going to walk this slug back to about here. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to get into a throwing contest with a dart slug. That enemy... Um, which is a dart slug, shoots magic darts at you, and they can do a pretty reasonable amount of damage, and so I'm not going to out-DPS that guy from range. It's just a losing proposition. So what you can do is, when a ranged attacker sees you, you just back into your hallway of doom, and you'll see that basically the squares of the dungeon on the map that I'm looking at that are fully illuminated show my line of sight. So this slug, if it were to move into this square right here, which is the upper northeast portion of my field of vision, it could then shoot me with its ability. But that's how close it would have to get. And so what you might want to do is step back until you narrow this cone of vision as much as possible so that the enemy has to get a little bit closer to you before it can hit you. You could even walk all the way back around the corner if you wanted, and because this slug has seen me, he's going to follow me wherever I go. Enemies in this game will follow you forever, unless they completely lose sight of you because you teleport, um, or you go invisible and blink away, and then after a time, if they can't see you, then they'll just forget, and they'll go do something else. But while you're not doing any of those things, they're going to just follow you. So and try to kill you so you could go down here maybe and lure the guy all the way around but this guy is going to get into a place where he can shoot me a few times before that happens and i'm also just not really super worried about it so i'm just going to stand here and i'm going to push s until he gets into our field of vision and luckily for us he didn't go up here a lot of the times the enemy ai is extremely smart and it will get the most favorable shooting position it possibly can on you 
and it will drive you crazy. Um, but in this case, the enemy kind of came down here, probably just covering as much distance as it could. And now we're just going to move up to it. Unfortunately, we are going to get hit. Uh, but it chose not to shoot us and it's biting us. So, you know, it's not necessarily going to use its dart every single time. And that's fantastic. So we killed it. Enemies um, have certain abilities and they have limitations on those abilities as well. Magic points, things like that. Um, but sometimes they could just spam their ability consistently. And if they do that, like an orc priest, for example, if it smites you a bunch of times in a row, that's awful. And it can kill you and you'll be really sad. But usually they don't do it every single time that they can. They have some kind of variance. So we did it. And here comes a hobgoblin. I'm just going to walk over to this guy and ax him down. And we'll just keep exploring. And there's a sleeping quokka. You can see it's gray difficulty. We're not concerned about any of these animals really at this point. Now, this we are concerned about. This is a named unique enemy named Pargi. All right. I'm going to push X. And we're going to move our cursor over. And I'm going to push V to get more information. And Pargi is a unusually weak troll okay now what's scary about pargi is that pargi's a troll and a troll in general on dungeon 3 you would never encounter because trolls are absolute nightmares they're huge they're super strong and they do a ton of damage wolverine style with their claws Actually, if you want a fun character to play, do a troll berserker. You don't really wear armor because their body is too big for it, so you're kind of squishy in some respects, but your claws, you don't even use weapons. You just use your bare hands and you will decimate the game. Go berserk if you ever have a problem. And also, when you look at this screen, you'll see um, trolls regenerate and this troll, the unusually weak troll, Pargi the Meek, can bite us for 9 damage and claw us for up to 4 damage each, each with each claw, so it can hit us twice, So, and about 50%, 7% of the time, it's going to hit us. So, that's scary, but honestly, I think we can take Pargi with uh, a Berserk. We just can't take anything else. So, I'm going to walk back. Pargi will follow us. And I'm going to look for a good place to kill Pargi, and I'm going to try to do it in this hallway right here. Okay, you, I'm kind of mousing over it on the minimap. It makes sense to me, uh, but the way to... I'll show you. I'm going to move to it, but basically I could fight Pargi in this hallway that I'm highlighting with the yellow cursor here. But there's still some unexplored space, and there's, an op there's a possibility that some enemy opens this door and then flanks me. But the real reason I want to go into this hallway over here instead of this one is because I can get the staircase. If it starts going really badly, there's a possibility that I can run away. Now, it probably won't work, but I at least have that chance. So I'm going to uh, start walking myself over there. I also have explored there, so there's less chance for an enemy to add on to our little fight and I'm going to stay about right here okay now work I'm going to use everything that I can because this is a red enemy I don't think Pargi will be that hard but you never know all right and so Pargi could kill us could straight kill us uh, if things go south so I'm going to use Trog's hand when Pargi gets uh, about here and then I'm going to go berserk when Pargi's here and then we're going to fight all right, so in the meantime, what am I going to do? I'm going to throw stones. That's it's all I can do, I think, right? I don't have any wands to evoke. Um, the only potions I have are the ones you see here. I have no scrolls to read. I have no special things to do other than my trog stuff and throwing stones. All right, and we hit but did no damage, which is about expected. All right, now that Pargi is here, I'm going to use trog's hand. 
Um, oh, we failed to use the ability. That's a shame. I'm going to use it again. Now we got it. And we actually didn't drop below two pips. So that's fantastic. Okay. And now, unfortunately, Pargy is going to hit us. But that's the, the, the uh, price that I had to pay for using Trog's hand. And I'm going to go Berserk. And Pargy missed us twice and clawed us but did no damage. And then, so you can see, Pargy got three attacks on us right there. All right, now I'm going to swing. Pargy bites, claws, claws, and hit us a little bit. And I'm going to hit, and you can see that Pargy missed us and then did no damage. And we actually went up on hit points because Trog's hand is regenerating us. And as you can see, uh, we sliced Pargy and did a bunch of damage. Now I'm going to show you guys this. I haven't really talked about this yet in this guide, uh, but it's important. Every roguelike is different in what it makes transparent to you and in what places. In the combat log in Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, you won't see numbers of damage dealt until you die, basically. Like when you die, it'll show you how much damage you got hit for when on the death screen. Uh, so, you know, you could be like, oh my god, I was drop down to negative 50 health by that or something you know crazy but here it doesn't tell you it gives you adjectives and estimations and what you need to look at is the wording the adjectives and the exclamation points and what i mean by that is right here it says you slice pargi so the adjective there, slice, is describing that we're using an axe, so it's doing like a slicing type attack. Um, if it was a like a mace or something, it would be a, an adjective more conducive um, or descriptive of, you know, smashing or something like that. But anyway, after the word pargi, you see that there's two exclamation points. The number of exclamation points is a reflection of how much damage you did. And so two exclamation points is a good amount of damage. Um, I've seen five exclamation points a few times, and that's like an outrageous hit. That's like if you backstab an enemy that's unaware of you, and you're an insane assassin-type character, and you just one-shot them or something like that. Or you have some spell go off and just nuke someone's face. That's a huge hit. So this was a good hit. And then in red, it says Pargy's almost dead. It doesn't tell you how many health Pargy has, remember. It just says Pargy is almost dead. And the level of red describing or the color describing the status of the enemy is, again, also reflective of their health. And so you use all of these clues together to get a feel for how you're doing. So right here, Pargy was moderately wounded by our slash right and it's only one exclamation point we did like a, a reasonable hit and we took their health down to yellow and then now their health is like in this kind of paler red because they're like about to die now if you can look it's hard to see because the screen is red and then there's a red box outlining pargy um, but underneath Pargy, there is a, a health bar and there's just a little sliver of red remaining that gives you yet another clue as to the status of Pargy. So part of the trick of Dungeon Crawl is really piecing all of this information together when you make decisions like, do I stay here and keep fighting or do I run away? Like, how am I doing, right? And assessing this situation, we're doing insanely well. This is going about as well as we could possibly dream against a red um, th thread level enemy named unique on dungeon three okay so <laughs> we are still regenerating we're still berserk and we're only down four health and pargy is about to die so that's terrific right all right i'm gonna swing we missed and i'm gonna swing we missed again pargy did hit us right there another thing that you can see okay uh, just in terms of understanding what's happening in the game, look at my health bar. You see that I'm now at 59 out of 67, right? And I don't remember exactly. I 
The last I looked, I was at 64, but I might have even regenerated all the way up to 65. I'm not exactly sure. I wasn't... I didn't look at my health when I swung. Um, but what happens is when you get hit, the last hit that you just took, the game is displaying that in red. It's saying, like, my health is actually down here at the edge of this green bar, and I just lost that chunk from getting smacked. So you can see, like, how much damage you took right there. Um, I'm going to swing again. And actually, I, I don't know if it... it <laughs> Again, it was hard to see that, but I missed twice on Pargy, okay? And because Pargy is a troll and regenerates so well, Pargy actually, their health bar was filling up and regenerating. That's another annoying thing about trolls, so you don't want to miss. Also, missing is bad for us because we could run out of Berserk, which would be a complete disaster in this spot. But we're doing okay, and we slash again, and we win. So, remember when I said, you know, we were like, when we started, we were 30% of the way to the next level. We got so much experience right here, we leveled up, and then we're 9% of the way to 7th level. We just hit level 6, our axes went up to level 8, uh, and there's more to read. Boom. Now, when you level up, it just pauses the game, basically. And... Oh, it's actually 5%. Okay, so 109. The percentage will 109. The extra 9% must be reflective of how much you needed to get to 5th level. And that amount is not the same. It scales up, obviously. You need more to get to 7th level. Um, I'm sorry, that's how much it meant was showing to get to 6th level. To get to 7th level, you need even more. So 9% of going to 6th level is 5% of going to seventh level i believe is the way to understand that anyway um here we are and we actually got a magic point for leveling up and you can see like this kind of darker blue in the upper left on my magic bar it's saying like hey you got that magic point and they gave it to us right away and um we actually got more health we're up to 76 health and so our health bar has kind of extended a bit and awesome so what I'm going to do now is just start walking back to the staircase because we're about to lose Berserk. And I'm just going to go up the steps and rest, rest, pushing the 5 key to rest, rest, rest until I'm back to full health. I lost the slow and the no Berserk debuffs and I'm now I'm ready to go. The reason you do that, you come up the steps to rest is because... Usually if you've cleared a floor, it's safe. Not all the time. There might be an enemy that like was wandering around and you just never encountered them. And you, you know, you're in kind of a bad spot potentially, but most of the time it's safer to rest on a floor that you've cleared than on an unknown floor like this. That is the power of Berserk, all right? On full display. That was a red enemy that would be very tough for many characters to take down potentially. This character didn't break a sweat. I mean, like, we just went nuts, okay? And didn't have to use a potion. We're really in no danger at all, and we won. Now, our health is back down to normal because Berserk is off, so it's 51. So we're at 51 hit points now. We were at 45 when we started, so we got 6 going up to that level, and that's fantastic. All right, so I'm going to push 0 and... I'm sorry, O oh, and explore. Oh, wait, let me go back to um, the corpse. Okay, so the corpse is here, but... Uh, I believe that Pargy has a chance to drop a troll skin that you can turn into armor, but it didn't happen this time. Uh, any of this Knoll stuff good? Not really. I'm going to keep searching. Oh, another named enemy. Okay, so here is Terence the Incautious. All right. Now, the nice thing about Terence is looks like he's wearing some heavy armor. Let's see if he is. So I'm going to push X and put the character over him, and he has chainmail. Great. We want his chainmail very badly. That is going to be a huge upgrade for us in terms of armor class. I'm going to push V. Now, here's the deal with um, Terrence. A violent murderer who kills for both pleasure and profit. Terrence has been forced into hiding after a botched job. There's a price on his head, and he can't afford to leave anyone who sees him alive. I love the flavor of some of these named characters it's so funny and you'll see them when you play dungeon crawl you're gonna die you're gonna die again and again and again and you're these named characters 
are going to be like old friends. You're going to be like, oh, there's my buddy Terrence or whatever, you know, and you'll remember the times that he killed you and all the times that you killed him. And you have a great, you know, camaraderie over your mutual murder of each other. Now, what he's got is a hand axe and he can hit us about 57% of the time for five damage. So that's dangerous, but that's about it he doesn't have anything else that's special he has no abilities he doesn't have a wand he's not doing much so i'm going to walk back and you know terrence is going to want to fight us and i'm going to fight him right here so i'm just going to wait for him to mm, do i want to do that yeah this is fine i'm going to fight him right here and he's I'm just pushing s to wait and he'll come around the corner and i'm going to throw this stone at him and he ran up on us I'm going to go Berserk, and we're just going to kill him in two shots. He did He's not bad. Oh, he had a potion, but he didn't use it, mercifully. Okay, so he gave us a potion, and I'll push G, and I'm going to pick up his chainmail all day long, and I'm going to push um, a, a Shift X to zoom out, and then I'm going to push the less than button uh, to search for a staircase. Now, actually, I haven't talked about this either. This is why I keep doing these guides, just to encounter more things so that I can explain them for you. This staircase that I'm selecting, when you search for a staircase up or down, the search algorithm automatically detects the closest in proximity up or down staircase that you're searching for. And in this case, it has found this up staircase for us, and it is in red. If you see a trap door, that goes down or a staircase that goes up that is red that means it's a one-way ticket that means you can go up but it's an escape hatch it, and it will close behind you and you cannot use it to go back down so in general they're very dangerous unless it's an emergency the reason is like you don't want to go down into the dungeon into a floor that you've never explored and then not have a way to run away that's just like really a, a quick ticket to getting killed also you don't necessarily want to go up even if you feel that you have explored the level above you because sometimes an escape hatch can take you into a like an area of the dungeon that you couldn't get to otherwise on the floor above you that's filled with enemies and now you can't get out so in general i just don't use these unless i have to unless it's an emergency okay so if you don't want to go up the staircase that the search algorithm has given you, okay, all you have to do is push shift less than again to search for another staircase. And you could just keep doing that. You could just keep holding shift and going less than, and it's going to cycle between them, or you can go greater than, and the game's like, you know, um, I don't know of a staircase down, buddy. So um, I'm going to sh go to this staircase, and then go up, and then now I'm going to push Shift W to wear. I'm going to wear the chainmail. I'm going to just select it and put it on. And you can see my evasion has dropped from 12 to 8. But my armor class has jumped from 4 to 9, which is super good. I'm very happy about that. All right. That means that we don't outright dodge. Like dodging is great. Because if you dodge something, then you completely avoid any of the damage it would have dealt to you. Armor class works differently where it's like you get hit and then you mitigate that incoming damage. And you have damage that you shave right off the top, which is your guaranteed damage reduction. And then you roll a die that's like a calculation based on your armor class and your armor value, I believe. And you subtract that number from the incoming damage that can be mitigated by armor class. And sometimes it works out to where they hit you and they do nothing. And it'll say they hit you but do no damage. That's what it means when you hit the enemy or they hit you and it says does no damage. It means your armor class roll outperformed the roll that they did for their damage. And so in that case, you take nothing. Sometimes, though, they hit you. And you mitigate all but like one or two and in that sense you know you could say well evasion is better because you don't take anything but if you miss your evade you're getting hit full in the face 
Okay. Um, now your armor will still, of course, mitigate, but I'm telling you, in my experience, with most characters, armor class is uh, a better option if you can afford it. Now, spellcasters or more agility-based characters, they could go evasion. And evasion isn't bad for our character. It's actually quite good. I mean, it's amazing to just throw on there, but we're prioritizing armor class. And so that's why we're wearing heavier armor because in the long run, it will be better for our survivability. All right, so we're gonna search. We found a dart slug and I'm not scared of it at all. I'm just gonna push tab and walk up to it and hit it in the face. I'm gonna push tab and just slaughter that thing. And we found a ring of ice, okay? So I'm gonna push I and show you that we found our first ring and it's a ring of ice. A ring of ice is uh, not something that we're gonna put on, okay? If you find a ring of ice or fire, I'll show you. I'll push P and um, here's what happens. Ring of ice um, basically gives you resistance to cold and helps you with ice magic. So if you're an ice magician, then this is great, but it also makes you vulnerable to heat. So what this means is if I put this on, the ice magic buff that it gives you does nothing for me because I'm not using ice magic. Resist cold is nice. This means that you mitigate cold damage coming in uh, by a whopping amount, by 50%. I do believe the first pip does. But this resist fire with the negative sign, the minus sign after it, that means that it makes you vulnerable to fire, which means you take 50% more damage from fire, which is a complete disaster. You never want to be vulnerable to an element if you can help it, unless you know that there aren't any enemies in the area that can do that element, that type of damage. But for me, in my opinion, I will never wear something like this unless I already have resist fire and I can afford the vulnerability. If you have a pip of resist fire and you put this on, they will cancel each other out and you will go back to just being like, neutral against fire you have no bonus but you have no minus okay if you have two pips of resist fire it just subtracts one and puts you at one pip um but no no thank you and remember you can push shift five and look at your resistances and right now i have zero of three pips of resist cold or fire or negative energy or anything like that um but no thank you so we found a ring but we're not wearing it Lots of things in this game, most of the time, if something is like, I'll give you a benefit for a cost um, that's that looks really extreme, the swings are too great. And what I mean by that is, like, for example, a necklace of harm, an amulet of harm. You're going to be like, oh, well, I do more damage, but I take more damage. That's okay. I'm telling you what. It's not. Necklace of harm is a, like... In my opinion, it, it's just a one-way ticket to a dead character. You can maybe get a situation where you can figure out how to make it work, but I've been burned by it every time. So I don't use it. All right, here's Grinder, and Grinder is a unique enemy. And Grinder is going to be tough for us. Um, he's red, you can see, and let's push X and just look over him. And you can see that uh, Grinder is a Shadow Imp. And, okay, she's extremely dangerous. And here's what she can do. She can use Paralyze on us, and she can use Pain on us, and she can also Blink, all right? Um, that's bad, okay? Uh, she can hit us for 11 damage to cause Pain to the Limbing if any damage is dealt, all right? And that's from her Pain spell, I believe, okay? Um, Grinder is just, is bad business. And, uh, it's not showing me what Grinder is equipped with. Which is, you know, perhaps odd. Maybe that means Grinder doesn't have a wand or anything worth noting in terms of equipment. But what we have to do to fight Grinder with this character, uh, would be have Trog's hand ready. 
Because if we get paralyzed against Grinder, um, it's going to be really, really bad. Now, one thing we could do is turn into a tree. If we were a tree, like if I were to quaff, if I were to look at my lignification potion, for example, okay, and if I look at this, it says um, you're resistant to poison and immune to torment, okay? And I think you gain immunity to something like pain, but I'm not sure. Um, and so because I'm not 100% sure that you would be okay against that, uh, and by the way, you can just use the wiki uh, or go to the Discord to find out something like that for sure, I'm going to actually just drink my potion of invisibility right here, okay? And here's what happened. Watch this. I drank my potion, okay? And Grinder tried to do something. Grinder gestured at us, and we resisted with significant effort. So we made a good roll right there. Now, either Grinder tried to paralyze us or tried to use pain on us. Either way, thank goodness we didn't get hit right there. Now, the question mark in the upper right of Grinder is because Grinder doesn't know that where we are. Grinder knows that we're there somewhere, just not exactly where. But we're not 100% safe. Like, even though we're invisible, okay? We still make noise, and enemies can make an estimation on where you are and just launch attacks in your general direction, just like you can do if you feel like there's an invisible enemy around. You can attack, all right? Like in this game, you can hold control and then push the arrow key to attack in a direction that there's nothing and just take a swing uh, and hope you get it. So because we know that Grinder might do that, I'm actually going to step to this square right here to throw Grinder off the scent. So if like Grinder were to blast that square, nothing would happen. I'm going to walk Grinder back here. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go here. Okay. And I'm going to try and get around the corner. I did. And I'm going to try to get back to the steps. Now you could just click on the mini map, um, uh, but not when you're not when you're in combat. So I'm going to go over here. Um, and Grinder is still following, right? Grinder still has some idea uh, of where we are because we're making noise. Grinder says, you look like you could use a good racking. I don't want a good racking. I'm going to step over here. Grinder says, make like a tree. I'm actually trying to make like a tree. I don't know if you are aware of that. And I'm going to step over here and I'm on the staircase. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the steps, okay? And you can see our invisibility is wearing off, all right? And by the way, if you mouse over invisibility, look at all the description the game gives you about this, telling you what your ability does for you and what you can expect. So this is super helpful. And then you see down here in the lower right or lower left, I'm sorry, it says you flicker for a moment. That is an indication that our invisibility is wearing off, right? I'm just going to push five. And then it says you flicker back into view and our invisibility buff is gone, meaning we can be seen now. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to push um, shift X and then I'm going to push E. Okay. Oops, uh, I'm going to push E again and E again. I'm going to move my cursor over here onto the stairwell. Okay, let me try that again. And I'll push E now with my cursor on the stairwell. And then it makes this big like red area with X's everywhere. That means exclude area. But I'm just going to push E again. And this means exclude but only one square. Okay, and what this means is there is now, all right, a x on this staircase and i am telling myself hey you can't go down this stairway i'm doing that because grinder is going to be there if i go down there grinder is going to be like right there waiting for me and so i don't want to fight grinder right now so i'm excluding this to remind myself use a different staircase to go down so you don't have to fight grinder okay now another thing that you can do all right is you can push shift x 
And while you're on this screen, you can push shift one for the exclamation point. Okay. And it says new annotation for D2. All right. Um, and you can put a warning. All right. Which means that the game will like pause and tell you about something that you're worried about. Um, so I'm going to write to myself grinder below and put that there. And so now, whenever I come into or out of this level, I will see that note to myself, like, hey, grinder is below. So I'm gonna go down to another staircase, and I'm gonna pick this staircase over here. Remember, if there's an asterisk, a yellow asterisk in the upper right corner of a staircase, it means you've never used that staircase before. And look, we come out way over here. The grinder staircase was up here. And so now we're down here. The reason I am doing this is because I want to kill enemies. I want to kill enemies so that I can get enough piety, hopefully, with Trog, uh, to build up for Trog's hand. Because Trog's hand will make Grinder much, much easier for us, okay? I'm just throwing stones at this worm that's coming at us. And I'm just going to step in. And worms are very hard, by the way. They have a bunch of health. So you got to be careful. They're not hard for us, but for early game stuff, they're tough. All right, well, so I found myself Grinder again. Okay. I knew that was probably going to happen. There weren't enough enemies for me to fight to get this situation to be ideal, but it's this is where we're at. So I'm going to step back, okay? Grinder is going to come here, and what we're going to do... Hmm, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what, I should have done this when I went up the steps, but I'm going to read my identify scroll and identify myself um, this potion, and it's a potion of curing. That's actually not bad. Um, okay, so now we have a potion of curing and we have our two potions of heal wounds. Now, my inclination would be to just go berserk on grinder and get nuts. But the problem with doing that, the problem with going berserk on Grinder right here, is that Grinder can blink. It is devastating if you go berserk and an enemy blinks too far away from you and you can't reach them and you know your berserk is going to wear out and you're going to be slow. That means like you're probably going to die, but we'll see, okay? In this spot, we're not that far into the game. We're only on Dungeon 3. I'm going to fight Grinder, but... A strategy that you could employ that might be smarter, actually not might be, is smarter, would be to heed the exclusion that I made and the note that I made about Grinder. And when I came into this staircase and I saw this staircase down, the magenta staircase down, go down to level four, just skip level three. Be like, you know what, Grinder's up there. I need to get more piety for Trog's hand before I fight Grinder, so let's do that on Dungeon 4 with regular enemies and then come back when we're strong enough to fight Grinder. That's actually a decision that you have to make a lot in Dungeon Crawl, and it's very difficult uh, for new players to understand that technique. But sometimes, like, the tendency can be to just clear out levels methodically as you go get hoover up all of the experience that you can and move on down and ideally that is exactly what you would do but sometimes you encounter out of depth ood monsters that are too hard or named uniques that are too hard for your character and you need to just skip them and go down to get stronger and then come back up later okay so that is probably what I should have done right there. Um, okay, it's fine now. We're just going to do what we can. And I'm going to just kind of... I'm going to wait once. Grinder's here. I'm going to step over at Grinder. And then Grinder tried to hit us. And um, I'm going to go all in. Again, this might be dumb. You could do this differently, but I'm going to go Berserk right now. And now watch this. This is why you don't, because Grinder blinked away. Now, Grinder is over here. Luckily, Blink doesn't go super far. And, um, but you, I mean, you see, I just got embarrassed. Like, Grinder just immediately blinked away from me. And that could have spelled the end of our character. And that's okay. Like, that just happens. 
And if that does happen to you, if you find an enemy that like you don't know you what they're gonna do, you can't expect it. You you just learn, you move on, and you start again. You know what I mean? Now I fought Grinder a bunch, and this area, Blink is an amazing spell. But number one, what you need to understand about Blink is that it's not controlled. So Bl so Grinder doesn't get to pick where he's going. Number two, it picks squares within a certain range that are visible um, to Grinder. It could blink you like Grinder was right here and I was here. There's a chance that Grinder just blinks like right next to me here or next to me here. Um, and so blink doesn't always get you far away. It, you can't rely on it all the time to save you. The other thing is I felt like there were so few squares. Look at this terrain. It's not a big open area. There's not many opportunities for Grinder to go within the range and line of sight. So because of that, he only went up here. I knew that if I stepped onto this square right here, I would have, I would be able to see from this square where Grinder had gone from that blink. Okay, and I saw that he was here, and so I just stepped up to him. Remember, while you're berserk, you are super fast. So I can cross this square faster and get to him and try to do some damage. All right, our Berserk is wearing off. This is really scary, but we're at least adjacent and hitting. Okay. And he, tr Grinder tried to do something. I'm not sure if it was pain or paralyzed, but we resisted it again. And that's fantastic. And I'm going to swing at Grinder again. He hit us with pain. I'm going to hit him again. Um, we missed. I'm going to hit him again. We did hit him. He's severely wounded. I'm going to swing again, and we killed him. And that is the risk reward, all right? I fought Terrence. I fought Proggy. I fought Grinder. All of those guys were hard, but Berserk got us there, and we leveled up. We're already now level 7, and we're only on Dungeon 3, okay? So that's actually really, really good. I'm going to just stand here. I'm going to rest, rest. And we got a potion as well from that. So our axes went up to level 9. Our experience level went up to 7. You can see we have 57 hit points, 6 magic points now. And we're rocking and rolling. Now, if I could have died right there. If one of those paralyzes would have hit, I could have died. If the blink would have gone further away, I could have died. And that's the nature of the beast. In the beginning of a run in Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, there's actually a lot more volatility with many characters than there is after you get further into the game. And what I mean by that is once you get stronger, there's less chance of just having some lucky thing work against you. Now, not, of course, not zero chance. It always could happen. You can get, you know, ruined in this game, wrecked by bad luck all the time. It's notorious. The game is notorious for that. But I'm telling you, in my experience, the more the stronger your character gets, the more you're in control of your destiny with your character, and the more important it is to make good decisions. In the beginning of the game, you can just get bad luck, bad rolls, you're dead. Boom. You don't have very much wiggle room. But later, it's like, if you die, it's usually your fault. So, if I would have died right there, that would have been my fault. That was bad decision making, should have skipped Grinder. But I'm not that far in the game, so I would have just started over, right? So you can't be terrified, but you do need to be cautious. And we got lucky, it worked out, and that's what Berserk will do for you. That's what a whole bunch of hit points and Berserk will do for you, is get you out of some jams. All right, so that was a really fun one. We, we, we fought a lot of hard battles, and we leveled up a bunch, and we're doing well. I think this is a good place to end this episode. We, we have a lot of lessons, uh, you know, that we learned, and hopefully... You know, the the philosophy of the game, the, the, the strategy of this character in this build, and this, you know, the deadliness of this game overall is, is starting to come to the surface, and you can see it. And I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll check you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Take care.